Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping and in this lesson we are going to post your property and your mortgage in a brand new QuickBooks Online 2024 file. If you have any questions please send them to hello at HV Bookkeeping and I also give private lessons to real estate investors. Okay let's get started. Okay guys we are going to talk about putting a property on the books. So we're saying you just got this QuickBooks Online file in 2024, and I'm assuming you probably are starting fresh and you're gonna you're starting a brand new set of QuickBooks. Okay, so let's talk what is a balance sheet. You go reports. So right up here on the top, I have it in favorites. I think it's always there. What is a balance sheet? A balance sheet is basically your current values of different things at one set date and time. Okay. So right now this is, you know, a fake account and right now we have a negative cash and we have a little bit of petty cash. And this is like what we've been using, but you know, your cash balance can go up and down. Your loans can go up and down. You could buy a property, you could sell a property and so forth. So we're going to talk about, let's say you've just gotten this and you have your checking account set up and maybe you have a credit card connected and you're getting along in the setup phase, but you're like, but hello, I own a property. Okay. So one thing I would do, well, let's start from the beginning. First, we're going to put the property on the balance sheet. So right now in 2024, you'll go transactions, chart of accounts. I was talking to someone, they were like, it changes so much. And videos that you did a year ago, Lori, they don't look, QuickBooks doesn't look the same. So sometimes you might have to go look for it. We're going to chart of accounts. We're going to say new. And we're going to find fixed asset. And then we're going to pick building. And now let's name your building the address is usually how we like to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna say one, two, three Main Street. But there's more things I wanna talk about. I'll go into more depth if I post like another purchase later, but how I do it is I post the property name and then okay, building. I'm gonna sub it out of one, two, three Main. And I'm gonna say purchase price. And I'll go into this more in a little bit. Then I'm going to say one, two, three. And then I'm going to save and new. And then we're going to do closing costs. Okay, why did I do that? Because you were going to forget how much it costs you to buy a property. And I just helped someone post it and he didn't think the number was right. And we went back and revisited it. And there are so many closing costs, especially if you are getting a loan. The bank charges so many fees and percentages and so forth. And then there's title and so forth. So... I only put it here as one blanket cost, but a lot of times when I'm posting them, I will line enter every individual closing cost there is. Okay, now the other thing to know about, you're adding and putting a lot of stuff on that you have no way of like showing the detail. Like maybe you bought the property in 2020, right? So there is a lot that happened in that time frame. So what I would just use as your offset normally is just the opening balance equity. And at a certain point, you'll need to get that completely cleared out to your owner's equity. But open balance equity is fine in, in cases like this where we're just trying to get everything out of the books. The next thing I would do is I would also create, and I'm going to just do it for one year. 
We're going to do accumulated depreciation, but I'm going to say 2023, and I'm going to put it under our 123 main. And now I'm going to show you what this does. Your depreciation cost. Your, it's a theoretical cost, right? So you were allowed, depending on when you purchased your building and what accelerated or non-accelerated depreciation you're taking, you need to always know where you sit on the basis of your property. You buy something for 500,000, it has 20,000 in closing costs, you're now at 520. But if you're taking depreciation, you're bringing it down. And the further you go down and then you sell, the more profit you're going to have to have, right? When you, if you have to pay a capital gain. So you want to always make sure that your books are very clear to you so that at any time you're tinkering with the thought of selling property, what will be your tax implication? You don't want to leave that to your CPA who could just die or disappear or move on. And you haven't, and now you're trying to go back and read 20 years of tax returns. All right, so I've said enough about that. Okay, I wrote up a little synopsis here so we could go over the thought process. And I, I realized one other thing when we're going to talk depreciation is that you need to break out the value and you should speak to your CPA. Don't just come up with these completely on your own, but there's a land value and then there's the building value. The van land value cannot be depreciated. It's only the building. So you really want to kind of build these pieces in, okay? So let's go back up to transactions. I didn't make a piece for the land. We're gonna leave it in the building section. This is just to keep it so it's all in the same detail. And honestly, though, I'm going to sub it under the purchase price. I'm going to break it up. It's just better to be more detailed. I love the books that have the land broken out. Because then it's it, if you switch CPAs, which happens, guys, you need to plan on your CPA dropping dead or your bookkeeper because it happens like every day. I talked to someone who has is in a really bad way because they they weren't tracking this. They were being too vague. Okay. okay. So let's go back to our thing. The total purchase price is five hundred, but we've got a hundred for the land and four hundred for the building, and we're going to presume this is purchased. before 12, 31, 23, okay? So how do you enter all of these? There's, if you have mil multiple buildings and you're trying to clear everything out, it's really hard in the past. That's where you would work with your CPA. And you, if you have a balance sheet or there's certain things you need to do, but we're gonna post the purchase and then we're not gonna worry about, you would have to continuously look up all your depreciation amounts for each year. Um, for however many years you've had the building. I'm just going to pretend it's one. I just did the building value over 15 years and I brought it down a little. Okay. So we are going to take each of these and post them on the books. So the easiest way to post these things is to actually just pull it up in your chart of accounts and you can post it right in your register. So you'll say add journal entry. Say original purchase price, and it could be 10, 1, 20, 20. Doesn't really matter. We're going to increase it. I'm doing the land, so I'm going to do 100,000. And then just use this opening balance equity because it's all going to be out. Let's just, okay. Now we're going to go to the building, but we're adding all of this for a 2024 start.
Oh, whoops. Opening balance equity, sorry. Okay. So what did that do? Go balance sheet. Now, now look, we have the land value purchase. So we're just saying, you know, out of this money that we spent, pretty much the building was worth 400 and the land was worth 100. That's it. Now, the other thing we have is the closing costs. And what did I, did I write down what I thought the closing costs? 15,000. And this is really important because people do not realize how much, especially when there is a loan involved, how much you spend in the closing costs. And this is part of your basis. This cannot be expensed. I already have that in here. Is everything going to opening balance equity? Okay. okay, so we have our purchase, we have our closing costs, and now we're going to book our depreciation. Now that's called accumulated depreciation and it should always be negative on your balance sheet. And I think it's a 26,000. So I want a decrease because I want a negative asset. So now we have the closing costs, the purchase price, which would have been 515, but then you take away, wasn't I gonna do 26? It was. Six. Okay, so that note that shows you your basis because if you took a twenty six thousand in depreciation, you now are your basis is four eighty nine, and if someone wants to sell it to you for six hundred, right, you have a hundred eleven thousand dollar gain. So that that's what you want to always be tracking. So the really nice sets of books that um, I work with, especially depending on the investor, they will have every year broken out. They will also um, break out every year that they do capital improvements. So it's so simple for them to see why they are wherever they are on their basis. Okay. And you look, your opening balance equity is like super high. That would really go into probably your owner's equity at the end because um, it just depends on your entity structure and so forth. And you would work with your CPA on that piece to get this cleared out to the correct piece. Your purpose most in the beginning is to get all of your assets and your liabilities on the books. So now we're talking liabilities. We need to put the loan. So we're saying you have a loan balance as, as of 12-31-23. We're starting a brand new file for 2024. You can't book all of the things of the past. So next thing we'll do is go transaction. Say new. I guess notes will work. Sometimes they have. Yep, that'll be fine. Sometimes they have loan. It doesn't matter. Notes payable is fine. We'll say Chase Mortgage. And then I like to put the property because if you end up buying another. And so why I show you how to do these inside of the chart of accounts is that if you're not an accounting person, you will get all your debits and credits via journal entries wrong. This is the easiest like down and dirty way to do a journal entry. And you see it says journal entry, but you can see here you're either increasing the balance or decreasing. So you don't know, you need to know if it's a debit or if it's a credit.
Okay. So we posted the mortgage on the increase section, and now we have a liability of 300,000. So this is really important, guys, because now you can see right now where your equity is going to be. You know, you don't have to worry about the um, depreciation at that point, but you do need to worry about that if you were to sell, because that would be part of your basis. Um, and you don't post the appreciation of the building that does not go on your books. So if you're gaining value, you have to do that calculation outside in your head, you know, like what you purchased it for and so forth. So this is the beginning of how you start your books in our series of our 2024 QuickBooks Online for Landlords um, videos. If you have any questions, please send them to hello at HV Bookkeeping. And I also specialize in QuickBooks Online training for landlords only. So that's the only kind of um, QuickBooks training we give here at Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. Please post any questions in the comments section or shoot an email. All right, have a great day.